If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. Do you know what you should say after you hear the Adhan? If you don't, don't worry, I got you. First of all, when you're actually hearing the Adhan, you should listen to it calmly and repeat after it. But when the Mu'addin gets to the point of Hayya ala salah, you say La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And after the Adhan is over, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us a dua. And he himself sallallahu alayhi wa told us that whoever recites this dua after the Adhan, then he will deserve the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma rabba hadihi da'wati tamma والصلاة القائمة آتي محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد. You can screenshot the dua right here. Make sure to memorize it and share this for good deeds. If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. Do you understand the importance of having a good intention? Your intention can take you to Jannah and it can take you to Jahannam. The Prophet وسلم, was shown three people who will be amongst the first to enter paradise. Number one, a martyr, so someone who died for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, one who refrains from begging for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third was a servant who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best manner and was sincere to his master. But the Prophet وسلم, also told us of three people who will be amongst the first to enter Jahannam. Number one, a religious scholar and a Quran reciter will be taken to hell because he used to teach people so people call him learned and so people call him a good reciter. Number two, a donator of wealth will only donate it so people call him generous. And number three, a martyr, someone who died so people call him brave, not for the sake of Allah. So let's purify our intentions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Jannah. If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. Do you judge people? You see, judging people is extremely dangerous because when you are judging someone, even in your mind, you're unconsciously putting yourself above that person. You're making yourself bigger than that person and that's what the word takabbur means. And you are consciously or unconsciously praising yourself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Never praise yourself in piety, only Allah knows who is truly pious. So it's super dangerous to judge people based off of their niyyah, their intention, their piety. How do you know? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King of Kings knows. One day a Sahabi was fighting on the battlefield and his enemy fell to the ground and lost his weapon. And he said, أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ But the Muslim still killed him. When the Prophet ﷺ found out, he got super upset. The Muslim man said he said it out of fear. Prophet ﷺ replied, Did you open his heart and look inside? How do you know his intention? If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. You know how the holy city of Jerusalem became Muslim. You see, the leader of the Romans, Heraclius, said, I won't give up the city unless your leader himself comes and takes the keys. Now, I already posted the amazing story of how Umar ibn Khattab went from Medina to Jerusalem. Go check it out. After Umar anhu came holding the camel and all muddy, the people were in awe of how humble he was. And the first thing Umar anhu did was clean up Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, which the Christians have made a dump to disgrace the Jews who were kicked out of Jerusalem. And when it came time for prayer, they begged Bilal anhu, who was also there to do the Adhan. Now Bilal radiallahu anhu didn't do the adhan since the Prophet sallallahu passed away because he would always cry, but he did it and the Sahaba started weeping. Then a Christian man named Safranius came to Umar radiallahu anhu and said, let me give you a tour of the city. So he took him to the church of the Holy Sepulchre and the adhan for Asr came. The Christian man told him, just pray in here. Umar said, no, if I pray here, the Muslims will make your church a masjid. So he prayed outside and that became Masjid Umar. He respected them and he even brought back 70 Jewish families to Jerusalem. If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. Do you know the dua that you should say before you go to the masjid? If you don't, don't worry, I got you. I'm about to tell you right now. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi noora, waj'al fi lisani noora, waj'al fi sam'i noora, waj'al fi basari noora, waj'al khalfi noora, wa amami noora, waj'al min fawqi noora, wa min tahti noora, Allahumma wa'adhim li noora. O oh Allah, place light in my heart and on my tongue and in my ears and in my sight and behind me and in front of me and above me and under me, O oh Allah, give me abundant light. What a beautiful dua. Make sure to memorize it, screenshot it right here and share this for good deeds. If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. Do you want to be rewarded for simply going up the stairs or going down the stairs or going up the elevator or going down the elevator? Well, all you have to do is follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It is authentically narrated that when the Prophet ﷺ went up to a place, he would say Allahu Akbar. And when he would go down to a place, he would say SubhanAllah. So whenever you go up, always say Allahu Akbar. And whenever you go down, always say SubhanAllah. What's an easier reward than this? Make sure to share this for good deeds. 
If you're a Muslim, I want to ask you a question. Do you know what to say and do before you go to sleep? I'm about to tell you the sunnah way of sleeping inshallah. Before going to bed, the Prophet ﷺ would dust his bed three times. He would also brush his teeth using the miswak before he went to sleep. You should also sleep in a state of wudu. Sleeping in a state of wudu has many many benefits. It is similar to someone who worships while they're fasting. This is an easy reward, just don't eat too many beans with your rice if you know what I mean. Then you should sleep on your right side with your right hand under your head. And then read Ayatul Kursi and an angel would protect you throughout the night. And then you should recite the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah and the shaitan won't come near you. Then recite Surah Al-Mulk and you will be protected from the punishment of the grave. Then recite Surah Al-Kafirun to disavow any shirk. And finally recite the last three surahs in the Quran. Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falaq, Surah Al-Nas. This is how the Prophet used to do it. He used to put his hands like this, blow once and then say all three surahs. He would repeat this process three times and then rub his hands on his body. And finally say and screenshot right now this dua right here. Then say this, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya.